You've already seen how SwiftUI's at state property wrapper lets us work with local value types, and how the at bindable property wrapper lets us make bindings to properties inside observable classes. Well, there's a third option with a rather confusing name. It's called at binding, not at bindable. This lets us share a simple at state property would belong to one view with another view. So they both point to the same Boolean, integer, string, and so on. Think about it. We make a toggle switch inside our code, we attach some kind of Boolean property that can be changed. For example, we might say this. We have at state private var remember me is false. And then in the body property, we would say toggle remember me with is on bound to dollar remember me. And so this toggle here needs to be able to change our Boolean, the external Boolean, when the user interacts with it. But how does it remember what value to change? Now that's where at binding comes in. Let's store a single mutable value in a view that actually points to some other value from elsewhere. In the case of toggle here, the switch will change its own local binding to a Boolean. Behind the scenes, that's actually this state property here. They're both reading and writing from the same piece of data. The difference between binding and bindable will be terrifically confusing at first, but it's gonna sink in eventually, just give it some time. To be clear, at bindable, we've used it a few times so far, is used when you want to access a shared class using the observable macro. You make it with at state in one view, over here, here's your class, and so you have the bindings here thanks to the at state property wrapper. But you use at bindable elsewhere when you're sharing with other views, so it can make bindings there too. On the other hand, at binding is used when you want to have a simple value type rather than a separate class, which is at bindable. For example, at state's great for uh, booleans and doubles and integers and strings and arrays of strings and similar. And you want to pass that single value around, not a whole class of data, just that one value type around. Now these things don't use the observable macro, it's just a string or an integer, it's much, much simpler. So we can't use at bindable. Instead, we use at binding, so we can share the Boolean or integer, whatever, in various places. Now, this behavior makes at binding extremely important when you want to make a custom user interface component. Because at their core, Swift UI uh, components like toggle and uh, whatever, slider, are just views like everything else. They're not special somehow. But binding is what sets them apart. While they might have their own local at state properties internal to them. They also expose at binding properties that let the uh, let them interface with the external variable from somewhere else. I'll give you an example in code because otherwise it doesn't make much sense. We're gonna look at the code it takes to make a custom button that will stay down when pressed. And our base implementation will all be stuff you've seen before. Maybe a button with some padding, we use a little linear gradient for the background, a capsule clip shape and so on. And so we can say in our view here, uh, actually I'll make a new view here, let's say uh, struct, struct even, push button is a view with its own property. I'll say you must give it a title string and some local state. We'll say at state var is on is a bool. I made it private intentionally, it's just at state var at this point. For our on colors, I'll say we're gonna use color.red and color.yellow. And for our off colors, I'm gonna use a color with white uh, of 0.6 and then color with white 0.4. So varying shades of gray. Then in the body property, I'll say like a button from our title, the action of is on dot toggle, and attach some modifiers. We'll say add some padding, then add a linear gradient, I'm sorry, background linear gradient even. Then your gradient, uh, like that. Nope, I'm being silly. Like that, there we go. Whew, got there in the end. Uh, the colors will be, if we're currently on, 
send back the on colors, otherwise send back the off colors. So it changes color when it's down or not. Start at the top and at the bottom. I need a foreground style of white, a clip shape, please, of dot capsule. And then a gentle shadow here, uh, with the radius being if we're currently on, use zero, otherwise use five. So that's mostly code you've seen before. The only really exciting thing here is that we've got different sets of colors being used by the buttons down or not. So um, I've made them both variable, so you can change them dynamically by whatever creates the button. Anyway, we can now make one of these buttons. We have this remember boolean, boolean here. I'll say in the body, we have a V stack with a push button inside. Title will be remember me, is on will be remember me. And then some text below saying, if remember me is true, send back on, otherwise send back off, like so. Let's run that back. There's a little button. I'll press it now. You can see it lights up nicely, uh, shadow goes away. It's kind of working well. Um, so the button's toggling correctly. It's changing its internal state correctly, which is great. But the text below is not reflecting that change. It's always saying off no matter what the button's doing. Clearly something's happening here because our button's appearance is changing when it's pressed, but the change isn't being reflected in content view. What's happening here is that we've defined a one-way flow of data. This content view has some local state here this uh, remember me boolean with initial value here. And that gets used to create our push button here. And this button has an initial value provided by the content view. However, once the button has been created, it takes over control of that thing. It's right here, we're saying, make this a boolean value uh, locally to me, this state thing here, locally to me. And so, uh, we're changing it true and false inside the button, that's correct, but it's not passing that data back to content view. This is a problem because now we have two sources of truth, two pieces of information saying, yes, I know what situation is, true or false. And really, uh, we don't want that. Really, we want to have one source of truth where there's one Boolean being controlled in both locations. This is where binding comes in. Let's just create a two-way connection between push button and whatever's using it so they can share the value in both places. Change it in one, change it in the other as well. So to switch over to binding, just change this at state here from at state to be at binding, uh, otherwise that's it. And then uh, down in content view, we've got to pass a binding in here. Uh, binding, remember we get a two way binding by doing dollar, remember me, like we used for our text field bindings for example, and now we pass the binding in here. And all being well, if you're on the code again, you should find everything works as expected. Toggle it on, it says on, off again, says off again. So it's working much, much better. This is the power of the at binding property wrapper. As far as this button's concerned, all this stuff happening here, it's just toggling a Boolean. It's just saying, change this thing here. It has no idea that something else is monitoring the Boolean and acting on exchanges being passed up elsewhere.